Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the End Game Gear XM1. This is an affordable gaming mouse that will set you back around £50 or up to $80, depending on where you are in the world. And it's available in white and black, and as you can see, it's pretty funky looking. Now, this is a no frills gaming mouse with no RGB and no unnecessary extras. It's designed with esports players in mind, professional gaming athletes, people that want to do competitive style of play and that is why you'll see that it is a lightweight agile mouse that weighs just 70 grams and so is ultra lightweight and has a CPI that counts per inch of between 50 and 16,000 and you can adjust that between four different levels and I'll include information on that in a minute and all the specifications in the description. It has a max speed of up to 450 IPS, 2mm liftoff distance, and Omron switches that are capable of up to 50 million clicks, as well as a Pixar high-end optical sensor. Now, I said this isn't a no-frills mouse, but it's actually a very nice looking mouse, and I was surprised by a number of features on it for the price point. It's quite an affordable mouse, as I said, and it does a fantastic job of providing comfort and stylish design without going over the top of unnecessary things. It has some pretty nifty little PTFE feet that I'll show you in a little while and provides a really agile movement on the desk. Now one of the things that I was struck by almost immediately was the cable that comes with it. The cord which is ridiculously lightweight and flexible. They call it the flex cord. <laughs> Uh, the main quality of which is it's extremely flexible. Now, I felt, it felt like a, a really odd, light, flexible shoelace, I think is the best description of it. You see a lot of, I've seen a lot of braided cables on mice in the past, but they're usually quite stiff. This one is really bendable and weird. It feels like there's no cable inside it. That's just a testament to how much weight shedding has gone on here. You see a lot of those other lightweight mice out there that have holes in them. I actually got a couple in at the moment that I'm going to be testing out soon. One from Red Dragon, another one from the Glorious PC Master Race that has loads of little holes drilled into it to reduce the weight. But this one is actually really lightweight without any of that. And it's just a sort of understated mouse that weighs next to nothing. And as such, it glides across the desk really quickly and easily even when you have it on a low cpi low setting you can basically move it across your screen with just the flick of your wrist and the movement and obviously if you're looking for something that's incredibly lightweight and isn't going to tax your arm over time i know that means a lot to a lot of people uh, professional players or people who take the game in seriously that they think a lightweight mouse is going to make the difference i personally prefer a bit more heft in my mouse especially if you're paying a lot of money for it to know what i'm getting for my money uh, but the build quality here is still very good it's got a very nice attention to detail and some simple things as i said you can see those white ptfe feet underneath very slickly designed there's a button there that you can see that allows you to switch between the various dpi levels a bit odd to have it underneath but you can set those cpi levels within the software between four different levels and customize them as you want you'll also note there's different polling rates and you can adjust that up to a thousand hertz as well and the end game gear logo on the underside there and uh, as i said it has a pixart sensor on it now i'm going to leave all the specifications in the description as well as links and where to buy and where to find out more information on it if you want to check it out it is quite a small mouse as I will demonstrate as I go through, you'll see it compared to my hand. Uh, but I still found it pretty comfortable. I don't generally get on with small mice. And I'm just testing out the Razer Death Adder Mini, which is even smaller. And that thing is absolutely tiny. But this is a reasonable size. I wouldn't say it's the tiniest mouse I've seen. It's kind of medium size, maybe a little bit too small for me. But uh, if you've got large hands, you might have problems with it but it is designed for multiple grip types so it works with claw grip palm grip and finger grip a kind of hollow sounding noise to it when you click it, it does feel kind of hollow sounds kind of hollow not a surprise obviously you want to keep the weight down i doubt there's much going in on there on the inside 
and so you have this sort of hollow sound and feel to it when you're clicking the buttons and if you want to hear this a bit more without me talking over the top of it I'll link to my waffle free unboxing in the description so you can check that out and see it but it's hard to do the features of this mouse justice as you can see that cord for example as I said is just so flexible and the whole thing is incredibly lightweight and I was really surprised by it and when I checked out one of the, the red dragon one that I'll be doing soon that has the holes drilled in it it's actually come out heavier at 90 grams so even though this thing is like a solid device with none of that design to it in terms of aesthetic it's, it's still incredibly light and agile and very affordable. One thing that is worth noting though is that the end game gear XM1 does not support macros in any way although you can download software to customize it you can basically only tweak the buttons in terms of basic settings or disabling them changing the CPI levels and updating the firmware there's no mo macro program availability in those side buttons or other buttons obviously you can set them up to act in game and I have done and play my favorite games to set them to do certain things but you can't program macros to them so that's one let down but then it is a pretty affordable mouse so you can't expect the earth from it and I don't think it's too unreasonable it does what it says on the tin and it performs really well for the money now I had a thought about this being white I wanted to see how it would stand up to some Cheetos because I figure gamers are gonna get this thing messy over time and people might say oh a white mouse that's gonna be a disaster and that was actually one of the things I thought so I munched on some Cheetos and I put it to the test and you'll see the results at the end and I'm happy to say that it comes out quite clean and so all in all a very good mouse well worth having a look at
This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.